The third thing that you need to do if you want to rise up and shine in your generation is to master how to keep yourself stirred up. Many things will come to dampen your confidence. Many things will come to bring depression into your soul. And you know how man works? If you are not stirred up, you cannot deliver at your best. You can be the best speaker, but if something break, breaks your mood, you will not speak well that day. And that day may be the day of your manifestation. So there are many Christians who don't know that the arrows the devil is firing at them is because he knows that although they are the best, he doesn't want them to perform at their best. So a man who wants to arise and shine must know how to stay stirred. You must know what stirs you up and you must give yourself to it continually. If you study the scripture, 1 Samuel 17 verse 48, you will see something remarkable that David did, which became the answer. When David confronted Goliath, he refused to be intimidated by his size. Look at the whole scenario that took place. David showed up, he heard Goliath cursing Israel. And he said, who is that cursing the armies of Israel? They say he has been challenging Israel for 40 days. Nobody could go. He now asks, what shall be done for the person who brings this man down? Guess what happened? His elder brother showed up. I know you are a proud man. Shut up. Go home. Are you a soldier? When did you start going to war? David didn't want the man to kill his morale. He turned away. If he listened to his elder brother, he would never have become the champion of Israel. The whole, the whole idea was to kill his confidence, kill his morale, so that he can no longer manifest. The guy was wise. He turned away. He went and met another soldier that didn't know him. Maybe the reason you are underrating me is because you are my elder brother. Let me meet the man who thinks I'm an answer. And so he turned away from the man who thinks he's a nobody and went to the one who thinks he can be the answer. Because at this point, they were looking for answer from anywhere. And when he went to that soldier, suddenly and beautifully, they took him to the king. And when the king looked at him, he said, <laughs> I, I love your boldness, but you see, what we are dealing with here is real life issue. <laughs> It's real life issue. I know you are bold. I know you are passionate, but please go home. You are a boy. That man there has been a warrior from his youth. The question is, this is my own youth. <laughs> what makes me also I'm not a warrior? Now, see what David did. In case you underrate me based on how you looked at me. He said, once upon a time, I was keeping my father's sheep. A lion came, I killed it. Another time, a bear came. I tore it apart. And this uncircumcised Philistine will fall like one of the lions. See, that's why you need to learn to keep your record. You need to learn. Keep your record. Don't throw them away. Hear me. Hear me. See the way the word works. When God does something with you, they don't want you to talk about it. They say you are being proud. It's a lie. It's jealousy. You went somewhere. A deaf ear open. Sing about it. Celebrate it. It's your arrow in your quiver. You went to a business. You are doing a business for a company. You were able to bring 1,000 naira. Celebrate it. You were able to bring 1 million. Celebrate it. They may tell you, get out. What is 1 million? Why are you talking? That is my own level for now. I will celebrate it. Because one day, what will qualify you for 10 million is that 1 million of yesterday. Most of what people say is not born out of a pure heart. God helped you. You visited an orphanage. You did something there. You are thanking God. Somebody who has never gone to an orphanage looks at you and says, look at all these proud people. The Bible says, if you give with your right hand, let your left hand not know. If your left hand is not going to know, how would we have known that Judas was giving money to the poor? How are we supposed to know that Jesus was giving to the poor? If nobody should know. Don't let anybody destroy your confidence. You need your morale in the day of battle. You need it. And Job, the guy refused that even a king cannot intimidate me. Thank you for the record you know about Goliath. But David presented two records. Number one, I've defeated lion, I've defeated bear. Number two, that guy is uncircumcised. I am circumcised. I'm a child of the covenant. When I move, God backs me. I'm not ordinary. You are the only one who thinks the reason I'm being promoted in the banking job is a joke. It's not a joke. There's an invincible finger lifting me up. You are the only one who thinks 
the reason this pure water became a water plant and is servicing a quiet bond is a joke. God is lifting me. The reason you think it's a joke is because you have not seen the finger behind me. When you are preaching, they look at you and say, how old are you? Where we are operating from age is not a factor. You know why they are asking? They want to intimidate you. They want to make you feel small. When they want to kill your morale, refuse. Don't judge me by how I look. Paul said, let no man despise thy youth. He said, but in all things, an example. In purity, in love, in manner of life. Don't let anybody deceive you. You stand up, you want to talk, they say, you woman, what do you have to say? It's not sex that speaks, it's mind that speaks. Don't let anybody kill your morale. You will need it. The reason many never rise is because battles kill them. And the reason battles kill them is because they lack morale. When David succeeded in allowing his morale to remain intact, he now went and confronted Goliath. The Bible said in 1 Kings 17, 48, even Goliath was smart. He wanted to intimidate him. He said, I come against you. You bring a boy. Is it, is it age they are using to fight? Or strategy? Or wisdom? Or secrets? You bring a boy. David carried his weapon. He undermined David's weapon. And said, you bring, a, you bring stones before me. Am I a dog? And then he went further and began to curse David. But David refused to be intimidated. You know what David told him? He said, you come against me with bows and arrows. He said, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel that you have defied. And he said, today, not tomorrow, tell somebody today. <laughs> the Bible said, now faith is. He said, today, your head shall be cut off and the beds of the feet shall feed on you. And when Goliath wanted to carry his arrow, the Bible said David charged at him. How dare you? This man is like a mountain. But the, the guy was too charged up. The morale was too high for him to be intimidated by Goliath's size. Do you know how Goliath works? The Bible said he was nine cubit tall. That's three meters. The Bible said his weapon was his spear was as heavy. The weight of his spear if you convert it to kg it's about 8.7 kg and then the guy's shield is somebody that carries it in front of him so somebody stands in front he's just fighting because of his size david was not intimidated the bible said when goliath wanted to carry his weapon he said david ran at him he rushed him you know this kind of thing that a little boy offend you and you are get out from here that was what david did he, he rushed goliath because the morale was intact. See, if your morale go down, you will go down. They are gossiping you. It's your morale they are attacking. You know what our morale is in, in, the, in the spirit? It's your faith level. That's why the Bible says, building up your faith. In your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. This is why you cannot sit on a seasonal movie. There's a destiny to catch. So what you do is to find what stir you up. Some of you is worship. When you wake up in the morning, play the song and keep worshipping. When you are driving, be playing it and keep worshipping. Something is happening to your spirit. And for some of you, it's prayer. When you wake up, you know what? You don't know where the battle will come from. The battle may come when you are driving, you are ready. It may come when you are entering your house, you are ready. It may come when you are taking your bath. Many people die while they are bathing. As you are betting, you carry the water to pour on your body, you have a heart attack in the bathroom. If you are not charged, you will die. But you see, when you are charged up in the spirit and your faith level is high, when that arrow comes to your heart, rakapate krete faraka, zazazana, zazazana, come out in the name of Jesus. What should I have killed you? We go like a coincidence. Say charge, brother. He said, building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost did you not read about jesus in mark 1 35 he said early in the morning before jesus enters the city he goes to a solitary place he prays himself into power fire 
and flame before he enters the city. So nothing takes him unaware. He knew the mystery of being charged. Stay charged. Your battles can come at the most unexpected time. And, and you know what? Your battles are your platform of rising. But if you are not charged, you will sink. Some people look at some of us. They tell us, you are arrogant. I told them you are joking. Some look at us. They say you are ambitious. I tell them you are joking. Do you think I came here to live forever? You think this, this thing you are saying is what will affect me? Where were you when I was in the wilderness? Why didn't you advise me then? Many years of hunger. Many years of seeking the Lord. Many years of death. Many years of sickness. You were not there. Now that I'm in my light, you want to come and bring arrows to quench my morale, to quench my faith. I refuse to be intimidated. If you want to advise me, call me aside. Advise me in love. I will hear you. But when you talk from envy, when you talk from jealousy, when you talk from bitterness, you are wasting your time. This man is like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. You can't move me by your talk. You can't move me. See, when they talk and they think they have talked me down, I go and lock myself in my closet. I lock the door. Rakapa sefrakata. Alazunata. Baraga banta barasto. Rakabada. Rakatwata. If tongues are not charging me, I go back to my books of encounters. The things God told me. There were tongues. At the age of seven, I saw heaven open. And I saw Jesus face to face. And I heard words that I would be a voice to many generations. If my tongues can't charge me, I go back to recite what God told me. There are times when I go back and tell the Lord, you told me you will raise me like a fire that purges a generation. I am burning. I am shining. I am burning. I am shining. I am burning. And when I come out of that place, I come out with greater aggression, with greater fire, with greater intensity. Nothing should bring you down. Keep your fire burning. You know what the Bible said? He maketh his angel spirits, but his ministers, they are a flame of fire. There are people who are burning. They are born. That's why they keep rising. He said, John was a burning and a shining light. Born, my brothers and sisters. Your generation wants to quench your fire. They want to kill your morale. They want to break you. And when you fall, they will say, yes, we said it. But they will never have the opportunity. Because, because many are they that have risen up against you. But you will say, thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. My glory and the lift up of my head stay charged don't be arrogant don't be sick but you are just pursuing your future focus on your future pursue it jesus said i must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man walketh at the age of 12 he was already on fire if Jesus at the age of 12 could stay in the temple for three days, you are talking to a man who has lived on earth for many decades that is ambitious. No, we are behind schedule. We are behind schedule. Go and check. David killed Goliath at 14. We are behind schedule. Far behind schedule. Don't let anybody manipulate you into depression. Stay fired up. You will need that fire to win your battles. Because the way the devil works is that if he demoralizes you, you will now lose the battle. He will now come back and say, I told you you are not qualified. I told you you are not choosing. I told you you are not the right person. And then you will accept the lies of the devil. But you see, when you stay charged up, the more the battles come, the more you conquer. The more the battles come, the more you conquer. And so a point comes, you become the standard. Somebody give us the shot! I'm showing you how men rise. Your friends who are not ready to do the business, you started, they now start talking you down so that you will stop the business. Don't stop. Don't stop. When you start making impact, they will intensify. Don't stop. A day will come, they will have no choice but to agree that God is with you. Don't you know what David's brother told him? They said he was proud. They said he was ambitious. But later when we read the Bible, we knew that it was the Spirit of God moving David. Because God wanted to raise a throne that Jesus himself would call his throne. Imagine if David listened to his elder brother. People will come talking. It will look as if they, they care about you. They don't care. Leave them. Leave them. Anybody who truly cares about you will call you in love. They will talk to you to build you, not to destroy you. 
This generation where people go and stand in public to paint you black and they call it advice. That's not advice. They are trying to give you a bad PR. They are trying to paint you black so that your generation will reject you. But see, there's a power on your inside. That power is what God catches on. He says, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power I start work on your inside there's a power inside that power can take nations that power can kill lions that power can kill bears that power can kill all your adversaries and cause you to rise up but you must keep charged he said building up yourself upon your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost this message is available on all digital platforms. Kindly visit our website at www.EncounterJesusMinistriesInternational.org for more information.